telephone rang. Uh, <laughs> I answered it. I went back. Oh my God, is that head going forward or backward? <laughs> but uh, if you go for lunch, you try to make a, a reference on a piece of paper. That the, the third snake from the left is going back, and the fourth one is going forward. Wow. The hydra was a problem. He had seven heads, <laughs> and they all had to snap in uh, <coughs> synchronization. And of course, the skeletons had five appendages, and that took the longest. I sometimes averaged 13 frames a day, which upset the accountants. <laughs> 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 Any other questions? Yeah. How old were you when you started with O'Brien, and what was he like when he was doing oh, the God. later films? Um, I can't remember that far back. <laughs> <laughs> I guess in my 20s was after the war, and about 22, I guess, 23. I was wondering what he was like in his later years, and what the, the fellow who worked on uh, the Black Scorpion with him. Well, O'Brien had a rather tragic life, and uh, um, he had more projects fold than he actually had matured on the screen, which was a, a shame because he was a very creative person. And uh, he created, when I first met him, he was working on War Eagles, which never matured. And then uh, after that, he was working on Guanji, which never matured. Um, after The Lost World, he wanted to do Frankenstein and Atlantis, which never matured. Then he had uh, some idea for big pelicans for the Marx Brothers, where this, they crashed on an island and uh, the pelicans carried the Marx Brothers in the sack. <laughs> he made many drawings for that. I don't know whatever happened to them. That would have been an amusing comedy at the time. And uh, as I say, so many projects folded. Then he had a rather tragic personal life. But it was a great pleasure to work with him. He was a very easy man to work with. And uh, uh, he was so busy getting new setups done that uh, I uh, finally ended up doing about 80%, 85% of the animation on my video, which was a great experience. Um, of course, a dream come true. Yes. Was Valley of Guanji um, a Willis O'Brien property? Yes, it was. In 1942, he started it with John Speaks, and uh, the whole uh, roping sequence, of course, was originally in Guanji, and that was transferred to Mighty Joe Young. And now people seem to think that we caught the roping in Guanji, our version of Guanji, from Mighty Joe, which was originally in Guanji in the first place. And uh, Cooper transferred it to the gorilla when they got involved with it. And, uh, uh, but it was a similar story of the lost land and uh, where dinosaurs were discovered. So. But that was called off during the war, the first Guanji that Obi was working on. And uh, then the, um, we tried to revive it when we were looking for a new story. You have to choose your stories very carefully. You don't want to compete with a cartoon. I never believed in trying to make these things humorous because uh, I think the closest we ever got to something that was humorous was First Men in the Moon which was still played seriously. But I think this medium, the way we used it, was for melodrama rather than amusing. The cartoon can do things so much better than, I know Pal found that out, that uh, his visions were very elegant at the time, but they weren't what you'd say commercial. And the puppetoon never quite caught on the way a, a cartoon catches on. And this field has been neglected for years, so it, it's good to see a company like this resurrecting it to make it as important as a cartoon field. It has been neglected, and uh, there are few people in England now doing this 
similar type of work brought to Ardmore Studios. Ardem? Ardem? Ardem. Ardem, yes. And uh, then there are a lot of people in Europe that are still doing that. Connected with Trinka. But uh, again, it's not as popular as a cartoon. This may not be a fair question, but I'll ask it anyway. Of all the wonderful creatures you designed, do you have a particular favorite? Mm. I like the more complicated ones, like Medusa. They're a bigger challenge. Pardon me, I've got a swallow. <laughs> I'll be covered with bread. <laughs> but, uh, people like the the, uh, the Hydra is a challenge and the seven skeletons I never had done very much at the time with multiple characters and that was a, an interesting challenge to get try to get character in each skeleton I think the most complete film that uh, I'm happy with is uh, Jason, but a lot of scenes when we saw it on the big screen the other night in Omaha, I'd love to do a lot of scenes over if I don't take <laughs> ten more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we were on a pressurized schedule, schedule I should say, and uh, you have to accept many times things that you'd rather do over, but, uh, such is life. Yes, somebody had a... What kind of materials were you using in the models? Well, uh, the Mighty Joe had a metal armature that uh, Cunningham had made. Uh, aluminium, uh, some of it, and metal. The Kong models were made of... Uh, uh, Forey Ackerman has some of them left. They were made of metal, iron, uh, they were sort of uh, swivel joints that were done in two ways. I used ball and socket joints mostly, and uh, uh, then they're covered with rubber. Of course. The build-up method is one method where you build it up with sponge rubber and then put a thin skin over the top. The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms was made that way. But after the animal world, why it became much more convenient to model everything in clay and then you could put the textures in it and then make a mold and cast, cast it in liquid sponge, which uh, simplified it a great deal. Yes? Of the work being done today in, in uh, feature films, uh, what, what have you seen that you particularly like? Mm, let me digest one. <laughs> uh, there are many things, of course, the computer is involved today and makes a whole different type of illusion with the liquid man and all that sort of thing. But uh, nobody's ever done anything quite like ours where a leading character is uh, an animated character. Um, Bill Tippett has been doing some great stuff. I saw some tests for Jurassic Park, and they're very good, but I understand Mr. Spielberg is now going to use mostly computer animation. But uh, Jim Danforth has been doing some very fine things, and Dave Allen. And, uh, but there are not too many people who are involved in this medium. <coughs> 